So actually, in the bus also, I used to get a lot of time to relax and then study for four or five hours, uh, like late into the night. I used to take a walk with my dad very often, like at least twice a week. And at that point, I think it's important to just leave it for them and just try to cope up with what's going on uh, currently. How did you plan these two years? What was your mantra to making sure that you balance it out between uh, performing every day as well as uh, you know having that endurance for the two years? Uh, well, for in 11th and for most part of 12th, like instead of like focusing on the end goal, which was the exam, is to focus on learning the concepts. So instead of like so uh, solving, oh, I'll solve like 100 questions a day, which is more relevant in the end of the preparation to focus on learning the concepts well so that they can be applied later. So because when you actually understand some concept, you remember it for a very long time. So all the derivations, all the like theories, all the lo uh, like the logic behind solving problems, that was like the main focus for me in 11th and most part of 12th. And uh, during the end of preparation, it was more about like solving more questions, recalling, revising again and again. How did you all manage your time during these two years to a, use it efficiently and B, again coming back to the point, not let yourself get drained out. So I used to commute by bus. So okay. I was to reach a little bit late, so 5.45 somewhere. So actually in the bus also, it, I used to get a lot of time to relax. So okay. uh, sometimes it can be stressful, but uh, that was also like some time for me to relax, one hour. And then I used to come home, uh, relax for 15, 20 minutes and start studying. Okay. Have my food and then study for four or five hours, uh, like late into the night. Got it. Uh, yeah, that's all I would say. Uh, I used to take like uh, during the five hours that I used to study after like uh, coming home, mm -hmm. like there would be a lot of breaks in between. Like normally a study session would last around 40 minutes, then 10 minutes break and uh, same thing going on. It's Got like I used to go out, like take some take, Keep taking those breaks. Yes, it helps a lot because uh, uh, throughout the long, uh, like when you study for a long time, you just, uh, sol while solving problems, you just, uh, Look at the problem for some time and just time passes. Correct. You don't know what you're doing and you just waste a lot of time like that. Correct. So it's like important to take breaks in between and calm your mind and like give, give yourself a fresh start. How would you uh, just bring down the stress and uh, relax? What were the things, that, some hobbies, some going out, what were the things that you like to do? Uh, you know, just to uh, zone out of those studies and relax. Uh, I used to take a walk with my dad very often, like uh, at least twice a week. Okay. And it used to be a long distance walk, like uh, five, six kilometers on a okay. stretch. It's like you just walk without like thinking about it. No anything. agenda, Land just walk. walk. So what kind of conversations did you engage in then? What were your topics of discussion? Uh, it was not studying in the league. Of course, I mean, just, definitely should not be. It was just, just like just whatever, what is happening like in the family or what is happening in the world. Just or sometimes you will not talk at all, just walk. So how did each of you uh, manage those times where where it was not uh, out of your choice, but you fell back in your routine? Uh, like there are some cases where you can like easily catch up with the backlog in like one or two days. Okay. And, and sometimes, sometimes you have missed something so major that no matter how much you try, you can't catch up with the backlog. Like you're going to study it the next day and you're going to not be able to study what was done on that day. And at that point, I think it's important to just leave it for them and just try to cope up with what's going on uh, currently. So then the other backlog can be covered in like a Sunday or some major holiday comes up, a vacation comes up. You can cover it then. The important thing is not to like keep lagging behind the, like whatever is going on in the class. How did you manage that pressure that was coming from the outside, from the inside? And how did you slowly start building up your, uh, you know, level of effort and studies coming to you? So, like from teachers and family, I didn't have any pressure. Mm -hmm. Like, but for the internal pressure, I think you have to experience what it does for you to understand that you don't need to ha like take. Uh, how do I say this? You don't need to be under pressure. Mm -hmm. So, like uh, towards the end of. 12th, like in November or October, I wrote an Olympiad okay. and I really wanted to qualify that Olympiad because I like the subject very much. Okay. But I, I was under a lot of stress and like, okay, I have to do this, I have to do this. And I didn't, I couldn't qualify it because like, uh, because of all the stress, I couldn't like properly perform in the exam. That gave mm -hmm. me like a idea. Okay. This is what stress is. Uh, a reality check. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not, not like reality check. It's like, Okay, if I am stressed in the exam, this is the outcome. Even though I have prepared this much, I am not going to be able to perform well. So, moving on, I was just like, okay, 
there's an exam is coming up i've done all i can just write the exam go for it be as chill as possible just write it i can't do anything else so that actually helps uh, increase your performance also more than actually studying if you are under uh, less stress your performance goes up that's what i think how helpful those tests were how much pressure they created adding to chirag's point mm-hmm. like in the same way that uh, academically the mock test need, need not reflect on the final exam result even the environment of the test in the college you'll get the test in a very peaceful environment everything will be quiet you'll get the most ideal uh, place to take the exam in like the omr is distributed on time it's collected on time you get proper like rough sheets you get a proper i don't know uh, environment the, the desk ideal setting i would say even the desks uh, the chairs everything is good over there but once you actually get the center you may not get the same things you get like while writing the mock test so you have to always be prepared got uh in the college test you may have sometimes option of like like choosing the place where you sit so sometimes uh, what this is what i used to do so i should choose one place in the classroom and take all my tests over there and once i use like change the position it becomes a whole different environment <laughs> and that really impacts got you got it ct exams are tomorrow so what did today feel like what was what was the feeling how did you uh, sleep the previous night how was it how was it all so before the d day like other than not studying or revising one thing i would like i would like to do was in the night i would walk just keep walking until i get tired and that would force my body to sleep okay. so there was no point of getting nervous because you had to sleep got it so yeah. that really helped a lot like it was like uh, there was no issue of oh i'm too nervous i can't sleep till 12 in the night because you were so tired that you would just sleep what are your what are your uh, ways of attacking the paper uh, i do a similar thing but sometimes in ct the questions from the same chapter are often grouped together if hmm. i'm not wrong hmm. so sometimes when when you can't get a uh, like one question like subsequently you may have difficulty getting the other questions even though they are easy so that time i like to like skip to some other section and start again so that like gives a fresh start so during the test i'm sure there was at least few of those moments where you all felt a sense of panic with with you know a couple of sometimes what happens is everything is going well and then suddenly those two three questions come where you are you know a little uh, misplaced or you know you're not you're not in your comfort zone anymore like if you can't solve one question even after trying it twice at most uh, i think the best option is to just leave it and solve it as like giving as much as a time break as possible because after like solving it twice your mind is conditioned to the solution you are trying okay. to achieve maybe that's not a correct approach but you will try to use that approach again and again and the uh, quicker you come back to the question again the idea will be still fresh in your mind and you will go back to the way you are solving it before so if you come back to it later maybe you get a new approach a new idea or you see the mistake you are making